check! It's English O'Clock! Ang pag-aaral ng English upang madaling matutunan, bakit hindi natin simplihan? Halika! Manood at makinig sa English Teacher ni Juan! Kung bago ka pa lang sa channel na to, huwag kang matakot! I made learning English easy for you! Please like, comment, and subscribe! At pakishare mo na rin sa iba para marami pang mga Juan na gaya mo ang matuto! Hello everyone! How's your vacation? Heto na naman tayo sa panibagong taong pampaaralan. Are you ready? Ako ready na! I am your teacher and I am here to help you with your English 10 lessons. The videos I prepare can help you understand your lessons in English even more. Kaya mag-subscribe ka na at manood. Huwag kang mag-alala, madali lang dito! Our first lesson for this school year is about... Information from various sources. Are you ready? Let's begin! The target most essential learning competency for this video is Use information for everyday life usage. Students like you can get relevant information from different sources such as news reports, speeches, informative talks, and panel discussions. The information you've got from different sources can be used in your everyday life. According to Oxford Dictionary, information are facts provided or learned about something or someone. Here are some of the common methods of gathering information. Ano-ano nga ba ang mga pamamaraan upang makakalap tayo ng mga impormasyon? First is through listening. We can also gather information through reading, interviews, questioning, questionnaires, observation, study of existing reports. Earlier, I've mentioned about news reports, speeches, informative talks, and panel discussions as relevant sources of information. Let's deal with it one by one. News reports are found in newspapers, televisions, or radios which aim to inform the readers of what is happening in the world around them. Speech refers to the formal address or discourse delivered to an audience. Informative talks tend to educate the audience on a particular topic. It helps the audience understand a subject better and to remember what they learned later. Panel discussion, on the other hand, is a live or virtual discussion about a specific topic amongst a selected group of panelists who share differing perspectives in front of a large audience. There are lots of other sources of information around us, and these materials are then classified into primary, secondary, or tertiary. Paano nga ba kinaklasify ang mga ito? Halina't alamin natin! A primary source of information provides direct or first-hand information about an event, person, object, or work of art. They are original materials which have not been interpreted, condensed, or evaluated by a second party. These are materials that were created at the time the event occurred or by those who experienced the event. Sino sa inyo ang nagsusulat pa rin sa diary hanggang ngayon? O kaya naman ay may itinatagong diary ng lolo o lola nyo. Ang diary na maaaring pagkuhanan ng impormasyon is classified as primary source of information. Dahil ito ay original na isinulat ng kung sino man ang may-ari nito. Another example, when you interview a person, 
The data you gathered are also primary sources dahil ang mga ito ay first-hand information. Narito pa ang ibang halimbawa ng primary sources. Punta naman tayo sa secondary source of information. It offers an analysis or restatement of primary sources. These are materials which summarize, interpret, reorganize, or otherwise provide an added value to a primary source. It is created after the event or is created by someone not from the time period. Kung halimbawang ang nilalaman ng isang diary ay ginawan mo ng documentary film, ang documentary na ito ay siyang magiging secondary source of information dahil base lamang ito sa primary source which is the diary. Another example, when your teacher asked you to prepare a report about a certain topic, and you consulted your textbook as your reference material, this textbook is also considered as secondary source of information. Bakit? Dahil ang nilalaman ng textbook ay nabuo lamang mula sa iba't ibang sources, kaya nga nag include ang authors ng references at the back of the book. Here are other examples of secondary sources of information. Question. Why is it that autobiography is a primary source while biography is a secondary source when in fact, parehas lang naman silang tumutukoy sa talambuhay ng isang tao? It's because an autobiography is written by that person himself. Yung mismong tao na yun ang nagsulat ng talambuhay niya. He is the original writer of his life story. While biography refers to the story of a person's life that is written by another person. Kaya naging secondary source na lang because it was only drawn from a primary source such as interview or from an autobiography itself. Lastly is the tertiary source of information. It lists, compiles, or indexes primary and secondary information sources. These sources are most often used to look up facts or to get a general idea about something. Remember, some reference materials and textbooks are considered tertiary sources when their chief purpose is to list, summarize, or simply repackage ideas or other information. Here are some other examples of tertiary information sources. Almanacs, chronologies, directories, manuals, handbooks, guidebooks, indexes, statistics. The specific types of primary secondary, and tertiary information sources you might use when writing a paper depends upon the subject of your paper. For example, if you were writing about the Civil War, 
you might use a Civil War soldier's diary as a primary source, a book about the Civil War as a secondary source, and a list of Civil War battle sites as a tertiary source. So did you learn something today? Sure ako na hindi ka na nosebleed? If you want more of this video tutorial and learn English in a light speed, huwag kalimutang mag-subscribe at i-turn on ang notification button para updated ka sa mga bagong lessons. Ako ang teacher mo, ang English teacher ni Juan. Class dismissed! See ya!